Are you hosting an event to grow your business but need a game plan to be able to make sure you leverage every single aspect and opportunity that come from it? I've got the strategy for you. Hi, I'm Samantha Cunningham Zavolinski, and in this week's episode of Hard Facts, we're talking about all of the things you need to know when you are going to host an event. There are so many pieces from before the event happens to the actual execution day and the event itself to what you're going to do after you've got people in the door to your event. How are you going to market to them? How are you going to use and even collect that information. We're talking about it all today. This is going to be applicable to you whether you have hosted 5,000 events before or you're thinking about your first one. So let's jump in. So let's think about our event marketing campaigns in three different funnels. The first one is your marketing, your pre-event game plan, your actual event game plan, and then your post-event game plan. So often we're so laser focused on the event itself. What are we selling? How's it going to go? Who's going to be there? Where are we going to have it? What are we offering? Are we doing special things? But we forget all of those other things that make that event itself so rich in general. What I mean by that is if you are going to be launching an event, you likely have a marketing strategy that's goal is to attract people to the event itself. But what are you doing to get that message out there? I actually don't want to focus too much on that today because we talk so much in episodes of Hard Facts about how you can market your business and your goal. In that premise, your goal would be getting people to your event. So you can use things like email marketing, your network of local businesses, and you can partner with local businesses to do a joint event whether it's a charity in your business, whether it is at another business's location and you're partnering together because your businesses kind of align well or complement one another. Those are all things you can find past episodes of Hard Facts for. We'll link some resources here for you to take a look at as well. Instead, I wanna think about how we're leveraging the actual content at our event to create a call to action and collection of data. Then what we're going to do is utilize all of that information for our post event marketing. So for example, you're hosting an event, you're putting out all of this information, you're asking people to RSVP, but most of them are saying and liking that they're going to attend your Facebook event, and that's kind of how you've gotten things out there. When people come into your event, is there an opportunity for them to fill out a form, tell them that, tell you that they've attended? So the way we used to do this was we would say, hey, drop your business card in a fishbowl and we'll enter you into a raffle. And I say we used to do it, but let's be honest, depending on the type of company you have, this may happen a lot. But if you're having people come through the door, one one of your main goals should be to get their contact information because ultimately we need to know who they are to be able to engage them further after this event. Depending on your business, your product, your solution, your event may be that first exposure or that primary exposure they have to your offering and the call to action you're supplying them with but they may not purchase at that day. Instead, you may need to nurture them and call them to action in your post event marketing. You are going to have to identify this when you are identifying the type of business you're in, what you're doing at your event, and the ultimate goal of your event. Here, I would really think and simplify this. The goal of your event cannot be a laundry list of things. What happens at your event and the way you collect and engage with customers can be a number of different ways. So for example, If I am hosting an event, I may have a team who can check in customers or check in individuals within the community. So if they RSVP'd, I can check and see if they have RSVP'd or not and say, Mr. Smith, thank you so much for coming. We're so glad you were able to RSVP and attend. I'd like to show you over here to whatever. Except if they haven't RSVP'd, great opportunity to say, you know what, I don't see that you RSVP'd to the event. I'm so glad that you were able to come. Let me gather your info real quick so I can shoot you blah, 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 right? So whatever your business is, whatever information you're sending to your customers. Um, Here is where you're then going to ideally use technology to your advantage. I would not recommend you have a form somebody fill out at that check-in point. Instead, think about how you can leverage technology and then this is going to help your post-event marketing. What I mean is could you have that person checking customers in have an iPad? Could it be online? Could you then have a form on your website or on a third party tool that lets somebody type in their first name, their last name, their email address, and their mobile phone number? When they do this, they submit it and it goes right into your CRM, your contact management system that 
list of all of the different customers and individuals that you can then market to. If you do multiple events for your business, you should be doing this every single time you have an event. What you'll be able to do is curate different lists from each of the events that you have, and then you can even create customized marketing messages to each of those audience lists. But now I'm eliminating the need to have to do something manual after I have that actual event. Instead, the next day I can take that list of all of the individuals that attended, both my individuals who RSVP'd and the individuals who filled out that form right on site and do my post event marketing strategy to them, which we will talk about in a moment. The other thing that you really need to think about, again, with your goal and the event is what is the ultimate point of this event? If it is just awareness, exposure to your business, partnership, a new announcement, a launch of some sort, what are you going to do to move them to be a customer of yours or move them to be a part of your network or move them again to that ultimate opportunity that's going to help build and scale your business? That is something you should communicate through the content around the customers, uh, around your audience at set events. So for example, could you have different pieces of point of sale material? So could you have a poster or a one cheater or postcards or table toppers that reinstill the ultimate message and a little bit of a sales pitch for your business? So now as customers are walking around your event space, they're seeing that messaging, that call to action and the conversation you'll have in your post event marketing. Those are just a few things you can think about as you're looking at how you create this overall strategy, but really have clarity of message and begin to expose your customers to what that call to action is in working with your business. Now, if you're a jewelry store and you're having an event at your jewelry store, that's pretty simple because again, they're going to be able to purchase that product in the moment. Here is where you're going to want to look at the lists after the event and have a post event marketing strategy for customers who purchased right at that event that day and customers who did not purchase. Or if you were launching a new product line, maybe they couldn't purchase that day. So your post event marketing is, hey, now come back and buy this product, or hey, we put you down for a X, in, you know, X interest in X jewelry, come back and let's initiate that conversation to purchase. There's gonna be different things you have to think about and you're gonna know best what that is for your business. But now we're talking about our post event marketing strategy. And when we do this, we need to think about all of those different channels we use to advertise our event, the different ways we collected our customer data and what we're going to do after to build that funnel for our business and drive again, more sales, more engagement, whatever that goal was of the event, that ultimate goal that helps your bottom line, how are we going to leverage that? So. Number one, I highly recommend an email marketing nurture campaign. You're going to segment your audiences. What was the goal? Half of that goal, what are the things that they could have done? Create a branch, right? So if I was a jewelry store, I gave you the example that they could purchase the product that day, that's segment one. Maybe they expressed interest that segment two. Maybe segment three is they did not purchase, but I collected their contact information. I need to segment this information depending on my goal because if I send you an email and say, thanks so much for purchasing and you did not purchase something, what does that do? That makes me look super sloppy and it prohibits that opportunity that I had created for myself. Same thing if I did purchase and you send me, hey, come back and purchase this thing you were interested in. So really making sure you have clarity of message. So now I've got my funnels based on my business type and based off of that goal. And now I'm going to create a nurture campaign. In past episodes, we have talked about creating efficiencies through things like marketing automation, but you can use platforms as simple as your CRM, MailChimp. You can move to a more uh, robust platform like Eloqua, Marketo, Act On, an actual automation tool. Whatever is at your disposal, this can still work. The logic behind it will just change. So if you're creating a call to action where somebody needs to pick up the phone and call you, you can make that a click. And when that happens, you can remove them from the rest of the content that they would receive from you in that email sequence. If it is based off of a click over to your website, again, you can put them in different buckets if you have different opportunities for them to click on different aspects of your business. So if I'm a jewelry store, maybe I, in my email, follow up, have a call to action to come and purchase something we spoke about because I have an online shop. Maybe I offer a one-on-one -on -one private appointment. Whatever that may be, you can have different conversations from there on out. But the reason you want to create that automation is because if somebody does take an action or doesn't, you will want to do different things to them. If they didn't even open the email, you're going to want to change your subject line and resend an email to try and engage and leverage that interaction. 
A few pointers here are going to be make sure you do this in as timely a manner as possible. When somebody leaves an event, they may be ready to purchase that evening when they get home, but also think about behaviors. If somebody is coming to an event, let's say after hours, what are they likely going to be doing? What is the lifestyle of your said customer? If they're going to be home, putting the kids to bed, cooking dinner, are they then going to get online and purchase? So should you be sending an email at 8 p.m. that night saying thank you for coming to my event and those follow-up items? Or will you see a greater success by sending that email at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning when they get back in the office and they're going through their email and you're driving them to that call to action? Those are all things for you, that you to identify based on your business type, but I also recommend you test and see where you get the better response. But now what you're doing is engaging that audience that you created through that online check-in page, that RSVP process, and moving, to them to, moving them to a point of purchase. In past episodes of Hard Facts, we've talked about custom audience lists. Each month, it seems like a new platform is stepping up and leveling up in regards to how you can use your audience data to target customers across their networks. So platforms like Google, Facebook, other ad exchanges all have these capabilities where you can take these lists of contacts, upload them into their system and serve them a very specific ad. So remember that goal we talked about from the event that you had, whether it was three different goals or three different lists that you curated, you can now take and serve them a very specific message. So think about this, you attended an event and then you saw an ad as you were crawling the interweb and you saw an ad that said, we loved seeing you at our, uh, our previous event. Think about joining us on December 2nd. Opportunity, maybe that customer bought something. So you wanna re-invite them to engage with you. The customer who didn't buy something, you're gonna to wanna to show them that call to action to come and purchase different ad. So here's where you can segment those lists and follow a similar premise that your email campaign is going to have to engage them to that next step and create retention and future engagement with your business. So, so many more options outside of just an email marketing campaign. You can create custom audiences and custom targeted campaigns to talk to those individuals based on how they experienced you and your past event. In addition to that, maybe you think about how you're leveraging handouts, point of sale material. You think about how you're leveraging information you're giving those customers when they leave your event. That's all going to be determined, determined by your organization. A jewelry store and a not-for-profit have completely different goals in having events and very similar ones at the same time. So think about what's going to be best for your business and really the resources that you have at your disposal. A little bit of an investment in software can help you leverage better retention, better point of sale, better conversion opportunities by creating those automation campaigns, for example. Initially, it is a lot of work, but then it runs and it continues to flourish and help your business grow over time. So that's it, that's this week's rant for an episode of Hard Facts, but I truly believe if you spend some time thinking about what that goal is, creating clarity of your message and having all three of those stages of your event marketing plan in place and planned to a T, you will see better results from that investment. If you've got a question, want to talk one-on-one, -on -one, or want to pop a comment below for our entire audience to help build your business, feel free to do so. And I would love to hear what you have to say about this week's episode. That's it. That's all for this week's episode of Hard Facts. Have a good one.